Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are talking about Phaser. Now, what exactly is Phaser? Well, it is a framework, HTML5, Canvas, WebGL powered framework for making applications in games, generally in the browser. And quite frankly, if I was going to create an HTML5 targeted application, a 2D app, Phaser would probably be my go-to choice. You know, if I was going cross-platform, I'd probably use a game engine, but if I was specifically targeting a 2D game using HTML, Phaser would be what I would pick. It's open source, it's got exceptional documentation, so one of the best documented projects I have ever seen with a huge amount of examples and so on, and they just released Phaser 3.50. So what we're going to do is run through some of the new examples. Like I said, Phaser comes loaded with examples, and then we'll go through the release notes about what exactly is new in 3.50. So here is the first demo. What you see here is a 3D object, literally OBJ or a waveform object file. Uh, you can bring in textured 3D objects now this is a still a 2d engine but you're seeing here it is uh, creating a polygonal mesh that you can use on top so this gives you some ability uh, some special effects you could bring in and otherwise again still technically a 2d game engine but you can get basic 3d support this is going to enable some effects that you probably previously couldn't do or at least couldn't do easily uh, next up and this one's sure to be popular this is an isometric map and it was created in tiled and loaded directly inside of uh, the Phaser game engine. So now you've got uh, isometric, staggered isometric, and hexographic might be using the wrong word, hex-based maps are all directly supported by Phaser. So if you're looking to create, uh, you know, an Ultima 7-esque or Diablo-esque isometric game, or maybe like Zaxxon, anything in the isometric style, uh, there is now support for tiled out of the box. And once again, you're seeing an idea of the kind of uh, demos that are available. All of the previous demos, by the way, were ported up to work with the 3.50 release, and there are an absolute ton of them. But one of them that you're seeing in front of you, this is the new isometric support so you can use the tiled map editor to create your isometric maps save them out and they will load up directly inside a phaser same with hexographic next up we have i don't i never know how to say this a sprite a s e p r i t e it's very popular sprite based um, creation and animation application well they've improved their support for it, so you can actually export your ASE sprite app uh, or data directly out uh, and including animation data and it can be used inside of uh, phaser applications you can see here this guy has a number of different animations defined um, and you can see them they're supported directly here so if you're doing your animations your sprite work in a sprite or a sprite or however the heck it's said someone will let me know in the comments down below if you are using that program for your uh, work you can now get full integrated animation support which is definitely a nice new feature on top there uh, the next one we've got here is the new lighting system uh, so you can kind of paint around here we can do point lights like so i can use the a and d keys for changing the radius of the lights so let's make that one a little bit smaller and the w and s key for the attunation of the light you see how they're kind of bleeding together so if you're doing lighting effects uh you now have this new point light capability which is definitely a nice one as well uh also we've got improvements to the animation what you're seeing is a 60 frames per second uh parallax map scrolling uh sprite animation here if you go to the examples for animation there are a ton of new ones but the animation system got a complete overhaul uh, as did the spine uh, bone based animation system in this particular release so I think that is the last of the demos and now we're going to get on to the release notes so here we are uh, talking about phaser 3.50 what you can expect it's the single biggest point release ever in the history of phaser literally hundreds of new features to explore uh, you can go into the full change logs we'll get to those in just a second they're kind of massive to be honest uh, so this is a bit of a breakdown on the biggest new thing so we got a ton of examples i've mentioned that more than once i guess at this point in time uh, they also went through uh, one of their members francisco went through and did a check on all of the stuff to make sure it works with 3.50. So all of the stuff out there should work. So they're also started the process of converting them to ECMA script six. Um, so that is definitely a more readable version of JavaScript. Um, there is a course for getting started with phaser 3.50 out there. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't find any examples for this one. I didn't look that hard to be honest, but this is actually pretty cool. There's now post-process effects pipeline. So you can do post-processing effects. They are added as a stack and um, handled in order. 
So you can see here they're they're adding a post-process glow and twirl effect on top of this guy. Effects are processed in order, passing uh, from one to the other before returning the rendering to the game. So it allows you to do uh, special effects, things like blurs, distortion, vignettes, uh, CRT overlays, outlines, glows, pixelation, god rays, wave shaders, and just about any other effect you could throw at it. Unlike in previous versions, rendering pipeline can now have as many shaders as uh, you'd like, and you can swap between them from your code. Allows for single effects to apply to multiple multiple shaders. Uh, they can also have as many render targets as you'd like. Um, so more details on that are coming soon, but that's going to open up a world of opportunities for, for creating certain effects. Even if you're just trying to get like that retro CRT scan line thing going on your game, that's one way to go about doing it. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is the new mesh game object support. This is once again, still a 2D. Uh, it is important to understand this is not a 3D engine, not even a mini one. Mesh is drawn by projecting the vertices into 2D orthographic space, but it does enable you to do some special effects. So uh, this is a uh, 3D OBJ file uh, with it. So there is a grid generation and OBJ loader, better internal caching and internal camera. So if you want to incorporate some 3D into your 2D scenes, you have that option there as well. Another nice new feature here is multi-texture support. So with uh, Phaser 3 was always single texture bounds. That meant that a most Phaser would only ever use a single texture slot when preparing a WebGL batch. If a new texture was found in the display list, then a new sub batch was created during render would essentially flush the batch, load the new texture uh, into unit zero and then draw the next batch. Uh, so it continued until all game objects had been rendered. This is fine uh, when you may, uh, when you either not many game objects are screen or when they are being drawn from at most a couple of texture atlases. However, throw some other elements into the mix such as text graphics, tile maps, all of a sudden texture, constant texture switching can take its toll. Uh, so basically they have implemented multi-texturing here. The impact on draw calls is dramatic. It's not unreasonable to be able to render your entire game in a single draw call now. Uh, so this is sort of like the sprite batching functionality that was recently added to the Godot game engine and in certain scenarios it can actually result in a quite sizable speed up. Uh, okay, so as I mentioned earlier on, I guess I think I said hexagraphic, but I said hexagonal. Uh, but isometric, hexagonal, and staggered tile map support is now in there. Uh, so you can work directly from the tile map editor. So as of phase of 3.50, you can now import isometric, hexagonal, and staggered isometric tile maps from the tile map editor directly into phaser. No additional work needs to be done. They support it directly. Uh, ASC sprite support. Again, I have no idea how to say that, even though I've covered it in the past, but you can basically take the animation JSON files and the texture atlases, and you can just create directly from it using a create from ASC sprite uh, uh, call right there. So you can see you have the multiple animations, etc., all together in there. So if your tool of choice is that, and you're using it to create all your sprites and all your sprite animations, it's going to make for a nice workflow. Uh, the spine, that's the 2D uh, bone-based IK animation system here. It's got a lot of new improvements. Uh, has spine runtime was updated to the most recent version. It went through every single spine issue and GitHub and fixed them all. Most important new feature, however, is the new spine container game object. Um, under phase of 3.24, a simple scene using a regular container. This was in 278 GL command calls, four draw calls, four clear. Under 3.50, spine container is 43, so uh, about a sixth of the complexity, and just one draw call and one clear. Again, a quarter of the complexity. We saw earlier on the point lights uh, game objects. So is brand new, uh, provides a way to add a point light effect into your game uh, without the expensive shader processing requirements of the traditional light game objects. Uh, layer game object, a uh, special type of game object that acts as a display list. You can add types of game objects to a layer just as you would to a scene. Layers can be used to group, visually group together layers of other game objects. Uh, animation system were completely overhauled. Um, and then a little bit more detail. Is this the final release? Blah, 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 blah. I'm not expecting any more sweeping changes to Phaser 3. Eventually 4 will be next, but there will still be some updates to 3 going forward. And when I was talking early on that there are a number of examples here, let's go take a look just under the animation category. Here are the, the examples for animation. So if there's something you need to do, there is an example for it. And this is where Phaser, again, really shines. And then we'll go back to the home. And here is all of your categories here. So if you want to get into texture, there are textures, uh, tests, and so on available, a lot of them. Or say you want to work on tile maps. Let's go in here. Let's see what we've got for tile. Texture. Why am I still in textures? Let's go back. All right. So let's go down here. as a tile map support. Oh, look. We've got uh, isometric tests, uh, collisions, a whole bunch of individual tile examples. Like, they just keep going and going and going. So let's say isometric. 
in there. Say you're working, so there's the one we saw earlier on. Let's say you want to work with hexagonal maps. Hey, there's a thing for that as well. Uh, if you want to get in here and actually look at the code for any of these things, the code is all available. Uh, come on, why didn't you open up? Anyways, the, the code is available for each one of these. Here you can see it in the sandbox. Uh, give it a second to load. There you can see. So here is the example code that's creating this project. So any one of these things, you could come in here, play around with it, see how it works, or just extract out what you need. Phaser is a very consistent uh, framework and how it works. So really, a lot of the times, just get the basics down, and then you can just learn the rest from copy and paste from uh, examples. They've done a really, really good job with their examples. By the way, there is a GitHub project of all of the examples out there. Um, so that is phaser again there is the raw change log i just want to give you an idea it's 160 kilobytes in size let's actually go look at the raw version all right there we go so that's the full 3.50 change log <laughs> so if you want to get into the full details of everything that was changed in the 3.50 release i will link this i'm not going to go through it it's way too big uh, but i do highly recommend you check that out speaking while we're here on github uh, phaser is completely open source it is under the mit license which is uh, one of the most liberal licenses out there is, you know, you, you're, you, you can't hold them liable. But other than that, do what you wish, which is definitely nice. By the way, there are TypeScript definitions out there. So if you're one of those people that thinks that uh, JavaScript is a terrible, terrible thing, hey, you can use TypeScript. Uh, so that is it. That is uh, Phaser, uh, available, by the way, at phaser.io. I will, of course, link that in the linked article as well. Uh, the 3.50 release. Some really nice new stuff in there. I got to give them credit. Uh, it's always been a project that I've really been impressed by. And if you haven't checked it out yet, I highly recommend checking out Phaser. It's one of those ones, uh, if you already know some JavaScript, it's just a great little thing to play around with. You'll be amazed at just how much functionality is in there. And then even better, there's, again, a huge number of examples out there. And then beyond that, there's also really good documentation out here for uh, so everything, all the APIs, everything that you're looking at. Everything here is documented. So you can see over here, uh, full documentation for everything you want to do. Uh, great little project, highly recommended. If you have never checked out Phaser before, the release of 3.50 is definitely a good time to do so. All right, let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later.